Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 now. Ephesians 2, 2. Wherein in time past, okay, be, long time ago, in your past, what did you do at past times? Your time at your past. Ye walked according to the course of this world. All right, a lot of times the Bible will talk about the course in reference to metaphorically, figuratively speaking, uh, the race or the walk of life. That's the idea. So wherever you're walking in life, that's the idea. So what were you? So that's why in the walk of your life, it has courses that you choose to take, that you choose to walk in. What did you do in your past life? In your past life, you are walking according to the course of this world. That's your thing over there. Is that you were actually walking in this world in your ways, your ways, in your sin, in your iniquities. Before you got saved, right? That's what you did in your time past. Keep reading. According to the prince of the power of the air. Ah, oh, look at that. So notice that it's speaking about the devil. When you were walking according to the course of this world, let's say that path is referring to the world. In this world, you follow the lust of your flesh. It could be riches, it could be pleasure, it could be fame, lust, etc. But all of this that you were doing in your past life, you were doing according. Did you read that? According. This goes accordingly to the prince of the power of the air. That's referring to Satan. All right, now let's talk about two things over here. The first part is notice that Satan, why is he known as the prince over the power of the air? Oh, then this is something interesting. Go to Mark 4, Mark chapter 4. The birds who fly over the air, they have control over the air. The Bible says Satan is likened to that. So let's look at the book of Mark 4. So above you, the air, the atmosphere, you got to realize that's Satan's domain and territory. Look at Mark chapter 4, and notice in the parable of the sower, Jesus Christ talks about the birds of the air who eat the seeds of the Word of God. But God calls those birds of the air as Satan. All right, Mark chapter 4. We'll read verse 4. Came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Look at this. The wayside, the course of this world. See that? And the birds take it over. That matches with Ephesians 2, 2, 2. But this is likened to Satan. Verse 15, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard what? Satan cometh immediately and taketh the word that was sown in their hearts. So this is referring to Satan here. Now, if Satan is known to be as the prince of the power of the air, then it brings us a few questions. It looks like all these markers got raptured. I thought that I... Oh, I put them all over here. So weird. Sorry about that. Now... It says power and air. If you're going to take that more literally then, then br this brings up a scary thought then. Then think about any kind of power you can think about air-wise. What are the powers over our atmosphere today? Why, you know, you think about the radio stations, yeah. internet. Yeah. A lot of people talking about, you know, 5G and they making a big deal with that one where it's something satanic or demonic, etc., etc. TV waves, etc., etc. You got to realize that Satan is that the above air over here, that's his domain and territory. Wow. Is it really? Can you honestly say Satan's all over that? Well, the Bible says, by their fruits he shall know them. Look at the fruits of technology. Is it mostly good or bad when you're going to be honest about it? There are some good things that God can use out of it, but let's be honest, mostly it's just bad. 
A lot of times when I talk about millennial generation, I would say it to them in this way. We are a TV-minded generation. Where would you learn that language from? Where would you learn that dressing from? Where would you learn that behavior from? Where would you learn that liberal doctrine from? TV. Go home and pray about that for a while. Where do people get the idea about being terrified about COVID-19? The news media. The news media. The news media. More COVID cases. What? One more person at church. So churches should close down. Well, we're terrified. It's the end of the world. Shut down churches. See, this is their mentality. Pastor Donovan said it this way, which, was so, which is so brilliant. He says, look, just don't watch news forever in years. When you walk outside, you would hardly tell COVID-19 happened. That's the thing over there. So, I mean, look at the fruits of that one. Look at the fruits of that. Now, obviously, scientifically speaking, physically, literally speaking, when we're looking at uh, the technology waves, honestly, it's not like satanic uh, powers inside it or something like that. The context of Ephesians 2 is what? Spiritual. Right. So when we're looking at the context of the power of the air here, let's be honest, the powers that are going all over the air, when we're talking about the spiritual fruits of it, it's mostly bad. It's mostly Satan's territory, his domain. I'll be honest, even though Christian channels are taking advantage of Satan's territory, praise the Lord through the internet and reaching lost souls, getting back at the devil, let's be honest, just because you watch something Christian or Bible-believing on YouTube doesn't mean you easily get swayed by the same YouTube, by the same Google, by the same Facebook and Twitter with tons of misinformation and wrong doctrine. How about that? Now you go home and pray about that for a while. Go back to Ephesians 2. Now look, it, if you're walking in the course of this world, it goes according. See that? His will, the Satan's will. Wait a minute. If it goes Satan's will, keep reading. The last part of verse 2. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Look at that. So all of this over here, when you're walking according to the course of this world, the Bible says it's operating. It's now working amongst where? Lost people. They're called children of disobedience. Why? Because they disobey God. They don't obey God. So this is known as disobedience, children of disobedience. Based off of what? Disobedience at the Garden of Eden, where everyone inherited that sinful nature. That disobedience from Adam and Eve. That's we are called children of disobedience. Every single day of your life, you disobey God. It's that simple. So you're children of disobedience when you sin. So that means then, this is referring to lost people, yes? Children of disobedience. If that means lost people, one, and not only that, lost people walk according to the course of this world, which is riches, pleasure, lust, fame, etc. Two, and this is according to the will of Satan. Three, then that means everybody was once demon possessed before they got saved. Do you realize that? You were all demon possessed before you got saved. Amen. Let that sink in your head for a while. Amen. That's what it is, man. I mean, look, uh, uh, follow, okay, read the verse, all right? Don't look at me like a tree full of owls, like I keep telling you. <laughs> Just look at the verse and follow the logic here. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? But aren't you filled and possessed by the Holy Spirit when you go according to His mighty power like we read Ephesians 1? Right. So either you're filled with the Spirit, you're controlled by Him, or you're filled with the devil and controlled by Him. So everyone was once demon-possessed back then. Wow, that's something over there. That's something. And that goes what? According to the course of this world when you walk. Wait a minute then. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. Christians are still doing that. Christians are still doing that. In your Christian walk, you should be walking according to the Holy Spirit. But instead, you choose to go back your natural man state again. Remember, you have two states. Remember, you have two, per, you have two things inside you. That is the Holy Spirit and you have the fleshly nature. All right, you have the Holy Spirit side and you have the fleshly nature side. Remember that. So, 
what, what do you choose to walk? Do you choose to walk in the course of this one? Or do you choose to walk according to the course of this guy? Look at the colors here. See the purple fleshly side following this path here, the course of this world? That's which side do you choose? If walking in this path is demon possession and walking in this path, in this path over here, this green light, is Holy Spirit filling, then that shows right here that a Christian can be demon possessed. A lot of people hate that teaching. They say, no, uh, well, there's a halfway thing over there where Satan's involved. So let's call it halfway demon possession or demonic oppression, they would like to call it. No, Ephesians 2, that's more than oppressed. That's not being oppressed. That's possessed by him. You're going according to his will. And that's based on what? Walking according to the course of this world. So what do you choose to walk in? Well, no, pastor, it, it's impossible for me to walk here. No, then why did Galatians 5 read this? Look at verse 16. This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and ye shall what? Not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why would Paul tell you to do that then? Because he knows that, when, uh, that you can walk in the flesh at times rather than walking in the Holy Spirit. So you've got to watch out for that. All right, um, my goodness, it's already time, so I have to end it. Verse 3, I wanted to do 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, because it's another shouting passage. Yes. It's like Ephesians 1. Remember all those spiritual promises of God, Ephesians 1, that was a blessing? Well, Ephesians 2 is going to talk about that when we get to verse 4 through 10. We'll come, uh, we'll, 4 through 7. We'll talk about that next Ephesians study, all right?